we have been looking at a little phrase out of the 12th chapter of Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, the author, finisher of our faith, the whole metaphor of a race and fixing my eyes not on the crowd, but on the one who paid all my costs and allowed me to be in this race and who is a pattern of how to run it. And that's what we want to continue uh, for a few more days of devotionals. Just using that little phrase, looking to Jesus, and then contrasting that with something else we, we should not focus on. So, listening or looking to Jesus, not to our own plans, wishes, hopes, expectations. All of those plans, hopes, expectations can change, they can vanish, and if we are looking and focusing on them and not on Jesus, we are going to be bitterly disappointed because virtually no one's life turns out like they anticipated it would. So we can get our eyes fixed on things of this world, not even sinful things, but just sinful or non-sinful goals, normal hopes. We would all live to, like to live healthy lives. We won't. Everyone would like to live, I assume, a long life. We won't. Not necessarily. We'd also like to live lives that are full of peace with all of our families. Likely not going to happen. We're going to hope <clears throat> that we live in a country and in a culture that is easy and good and faithful and maybe even affluent. That's not always going to happen. So we have to face the fact that if we get our eyes off of Jesus, who is our Lord and the planner of our life, we will end up being disappointed. That will be an opportunity for the enemy to slander God to us, for us to be disappointed in God, move that on to anger with God. And so it is safe and wise <clears throat> to look at Jesus alone and not hang my hopes on my plans and <clears throat> my wishes. Just a quick illustration, maybe for each of these devotionals out of the Bible, some uh, cases where even good people got their eyes off of God and fixed them on things on this earth. Hezekiah, the king of Judah, was one of the best kings. Great revival occurred under him. He was a very good man. In fact, the Lord spoke of him and said his heart was perfect toward God. But when he was only 39 years old, had virtually just be, only had 14 years of reign in, and it, they were very good years. Isaiah the prophet was sent to him and told him, you are sick and you are going to die, so put your house in order, get all your papers lined up because you're going to pass away. And Hezekiah, the Bible says he wept sorely, meaning he just really bawled, poured his heart out to God, and God sent Isaiah back to him with a second message saying, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. I will give you 15 more years. Now, the reason he wanted more years was because Hezekiah at 39 still did not have a male heir that would take over the throne. So he thought my, the dynasty will end with me. And so that was what he was expecting. He'd planned for it. He'd hoped for it. He pinned everything on, I'll have a son and pass the throne off to him. But he hadn't. So when that expectation was declared off the table by Isaiah, he wept, he prayed, and God, and I don't know all the reasons, but God granted that request to him. It turned out to not be a good request. It turned out that he would have been better off if he would have just said, Lord, thy will be done. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus, and that's it. Because two things happened in that 15 years that God 
maybe grudgingly gave him because of his tears. One, he got well. And nations round about him, including the Babylonians, had heard that he was sick. And so in those days, they didn't have mail service. Hallmark had not come out yet. And so they couldn't send uh, Hezekiah a glad you're better card. Instead, the king of Babylon sent an embassy, sent a number of um, high officials to go visit Hezekiah, bring him a bunch of gifts, and congratulate him that he got well. Well, Hezekiah, this went to his head, and Hezekiah, then kind of boasting about all that he had in Jerusalem, showed them all the treasures, all the great buildings, all of the uh, jewels he had, the horses, the servants, the army, showed him everything he had. <clears throat> Isaiah sent to Hezekiah and said, what did you tell these guys that came to visit you? Who were they? Oh, Hezekiah said they came from Babylon and they were so nice and they were so congratulatory that I got well and, they, and I just showed them everything. Isaiah said, you know what? He said, because you did this and you got lifted up in your heart, I'm prophesying right now that not too distant future, all those people from Babylon are going to come here to this country, to Judah. They are going to take everything you got. Take your children, take your servants, take your money. They're going to burn the whole place, the whole city, burn the temple, burn your house. Everything you've shown them, you'll lose. Then the second thing that happened. <clears throat> Three years into that 15 years of extra time that God gave him, he had a son. Probably thought it was the greatest thing. My plans finally got fulfilled. His name was Manasseh. And Manasseh ruled the longest of any king of Judah by far. And second, he was absolutely, completely off the charts as far as wicked, cruel, murderous, horrible king. He brought about, and his sins, the wreckage that Babylon ultimately brought on the nation of Judah. All because Hezekiah, even though his heart was good, he wavered and he got off because he insisted on his plans. And he didn't keep his eyes on Jesus. And if Jesus would have just prompted him, no, I know it seems that you're dying early, I know what I'm doing. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus, not on our plans and expectations. Father in heaven, help us always remember that you are infinitely wise. You know the future and we don't. And we are given illustration after illustration in scripture where when we seized and, and gripped our plans, hopes, and expectations and got our eyes off of your will and you alone. We never avoid a trouble. So help us, I pray. Hold our plans and hopes and expectations, which we can have. Hold them loosely and be ready to surrender them if they don't seem to be your will. In Christ's name, amen.